All right, guys, we're back on the next day. If you guys remember from the last episode you watched, you watched us put the end wall kit on. We got both the end walls on, and today we're gonna put the plastic on. So the first thing you wanna do when you get your plastic is, you wanna make sure that you have a couple friends with you because these boxes are very heavy and they are hard to move by yourself. Luckily, I've got a group of friends here and we can get this stuff laid out. If you notice, this is one way of doing it. You can do it multiple ways. I've seen people do it everything from just laying the plastic like in an accordion style and then pulling the plastic over the top or actually laying the plastic out. We only have about a five mile an hour wind off and on today, so we chose to lay the plastic out. But the one thing you do wanna remember is down the center of each one of these pieces of plastic, which I'll insert a photo here in just a second, there is writing on it. If you look at it one direction, it says inside, and you look at it the other way, of course, it's transposed opposite. You want to make sure while you are standing inside of your high tunnel, when you look up, you can read the words inside from left to right like you would a book. So that's very important because on the inside of this piece of plastic, it has a condensation or an anti-condensation layer built into it which in all tents, all that does is when it does get warm in here, it lets the condensation roll off the side of the high tunnel onto the ground instead of dripping on your plants. And you would say, well, why is that very important? Well, for the most part, it probably wouldn't be, but some people that use these high tunnels to plant specific flower types or specific leafy greens do not want water spots on their vegetables. So you want a very good, um, I guess a, a, a lack of a better word, a very good look to your vegetables when you sell it or to your flower petals. So that just ensures that all the condensation rolls off to the side of the tunnel and then rolls onto your ground or your wood chips or whatever you're using for a pathway here. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you exactly how we pull this over. Um, it starts as simple with tennis balls. We don't have any tennis balls. Um, we gave them to the dog and the dog ate them. So all I've got is my son's uh, little Nerf basketballs when he was a little kid. So of course, he doesn't need them anymore, so we're gonna use those. So Phil, you wanna help me here, and we're gonna show you exactly how we tie this up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this basketball, and we're gonna go underneath this piece of plastic about a foot or two in, and we're just gonna make a loop, kinda like you're making those little Kleenex ghosts you used to make in grade school. And then we're gonna tie it off. You don't have to be a knot master here. You just have to uh, just tie a knot so we can get it thrown over. Okay, and then you take the other end of the rope here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab and bustle up the end of this, and then we're gonna throw it over that main purlin. And then we'll have somebody on the other side there to catch it. And then we're just gonna pull it snug. If you look all the way down the tunnel, you see we've just got it snug put on there. Then we're gonna put three people on each side, and then a couple inside and one watching. And then we're just gonna slowly pull this plastic over the top of it and trying to make sure we don't snag anything. There we go. And then Phil's gonna pull that just snug, just like that. So we're gonna get this plastic pulled. All right, folks, it was very windy and with all that plastic, it was uh, kind of obnoxious with the noise. So I'm going to voice this over. Basically, they have the three balls wrapped around the plastic and now they're pulling it with the rope. One thing that's very helpful is to make sure that if you feel snag or any resistance whatsoever, the folks that are on the inside, hopefully they'll have an aluminum painter's pole with a piece of one inch PVC uh, duct taped over those threaded caps and or a broom or something like that. Just basically something tall enough that you can press against the plastic and then relieve those points where the plastic gets snagged up on anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, everybody has a snag, it's not a big deal. Just be ready for it and make sure that your folks on the ground that are on the rope there aren't over pooling. Now this whole process is taking less than five minutes. We have the clock sped up a little bit, but it's important to know that it goes very fast. Even with just a couple of people, it may double in time to 10 minutes, but it goes very, very quick. So once that's pulled over, make sure that you go all the way around and you have enough to account for any cutting or pulling that you're going to do. You just kind of make sure that it's evenly distributed on the ground all the way around. The end walls, we do give you plenty, but as you can see, it sucks down pretty quick. And then we'll get to the end walls here in just a second. Running at the visa, really talking to a real life Mona Lisa. Pieces, pieces hanging off the fleece. So much going on, it's hard to focus on the features. I got too many. From hip board to hip board, going over the arch, then going around to the other side, and just pull as hard as you can. 
and get that as tight as you can and then go from hip board to hip board along the arch. I find it's easier to start at the crown or at the top of the hoop and work my way down to the side, reset, and do the same thing. All right, guys, you guys saw in the last little section of the video that we got the plastic pulled over. We actually got our wiggle wire tracking set on both sides, and we also installed the back wall, and we'll certain pictures down here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to show you exactly how we set this wall up by doing the front wall, so we're going to get on that. What the group's doing now is we have cut the end of the plastic. When you order your plastic bootstrap, make sure you get plenty of extra plastic to use, so don't worry about it. Um, what we did is we secured the top half of the tunnel with a piece of wiggle wire in the tracking, and then we cut that off. And the reason why you may be asking, well, why don't you just pull it down and then put the wiggle wire tracking in, and then you don't have to cut the plastic? Well, it's a square piece of plastic cutting a circle hole, basically a half circle hole. So if you did it that way, see how it bunches there in the middle? You would get bunches trying to pull that stuff tight. So the only way around it is to cut it off, start at the bottom. We put one little piece of wiggle wire tracking on the top there, and then we start at the bottom and put another piece so we can get a straight line. We're using the inside of that painted marker as the straight line. And then what we'll do is one person will get on the ladder and pull the top. There'll be one on the bottom and one on the side here, as you can see right there. He is going to pull out. And then I am going to pull up, and then the other guy is going to put the tracking in the bottom. It's easier to go ahead and set your bottom nice and level and tight first. And then from the top, you can actually pull the slack out, like, like a pie shape here, and pull the slack out. And then put another piece of tracking in, or another piece of wiggle wire in. And then uh, it will pull everything nice and tight. So just keep going. So as Tracy makes his way up the ladder, what we're looking to do is to have that guy in yellow pulling all of the excess out of the way. Tracy's going to then pull up on the plastic at the hoop, and he can also start putting the spring wire in at that point. And then the guy on his knees on the bottom is going to be installing one straight track. It looks to be like left to right, all the way down where the baseboard with the lock channel is installed. Notice that Tracy has somebody holding the ladder, which is always a good idea. And then somebody else is handing springs to everybody as they need them. That prevents Tracy from having to get up and down off the ladder and prevents that guy on the ground from having to do some excess movement. We just have to, I'm going to pull up as much as I can, but you'll have to pull down to pull the slack on. That's as far as I can go. So you'll have to pull down. Dave, you may have to push down where Phil's right hand is. There you go. Just put your foot or push down right there. Yeah, pull down right there. And that's, there you go. There is a little bit of play here, guys. You guys kind of have to pull and push, pull and push in different directions to try to get this plastic as tight as you can before you put the wiggle wire in. If you don't, it will bunch up, and then you'll have to redo it. And again, the guy in the yellow is tucking away everything and getting all that excess out of the way. And when they're finished, they're simply going to cut out the excess. And we lost the video of it, but before you do any of that cutting, and especially before you open up the door, you're going to go around the door frame that has lock channel. You're going to go around the doors that have lock channel, then around the door frame that has lock channel, and then up on the vertical uprights on either side of the door, and in this case, on a 20-footer, the extra two verticals on either side of the door. Every time you put in a piece of wiggle wire, it pulls that end wall tighter and tighter, and then you simply cut in between the doors in the middle, if you have a double door and or around the frame and the door so you can get in and out. And it's at that point that you'll install the handle.